If your home were a restaurant, exactly how many cooks would you have to be just to get dinner done every night? Well, I'm going to tell you, you're going to be really proud of yourself today and all the other carefree cooks you've become today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. This is the weekly show for the methods, techniques, and insights into better food and cooking. We're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. And if you've missed any of the past 128 episodes, I think, uh, thereabouts, uh, you can see all the past videos in the archive on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash chef dot more slash videos. They made that up. I didn't. <laughs> uh, Instagram makes it a little easier on you. If you want to see what I'm cooking and how I did it, follow Chef Todd Moore on Instagram as well at instagram.com. Chef Todd Moore, no dots or anything. Why? Why would you want to do this? Because I'm a carefree cook. That's why I create my own recipes. I bring friends and family together when I do that. I learn every time I cook. I create my own cooking style because I practice pro methods and I love my cooking. And if you think that becoming a carefree cook cooking with dependable methods over written instructions, uh, uh, being able to recognize the effects of heat on food instead of cooking by time and temperature, uh, becoming truly free in the kitchen. If you think all of that makes you just one carefree cook, yeah, you would be wrong because you have become many carefree cooks along your journey without even realizing it. And this was the realization I came to when my favorite Baltimore restaurant announced that it would not be opening. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it. But first, today uh, we've got a true or false today. True or false, acorn squash plus sweet dumpling squash equals carnival squash. Tell me in the comment section below, true or false, acorn squash plus dumpling squash is carnival squash, all right? Uh, is carnival squash a hybrid or not? <laughs> I'll, make it, I'll make it simple for you. All right, look, I'm so glad we're together again today. It's another Tuesday where we get to move our journey forward. We get to take more steps. We get to add more tools to our tool belt. This is not a one answer question that we're going about. And I really, really appreciate that you show up every Tuesday to learn something new. You're, you should be complimented. You're awake. <laughs> You're aware. You're listening. You're accepting new information, new ideas. Even, this is important, even if they contradict what you already think you know. Let me say that again, because this is important. Just because a new idea seems to contradict what you already know, it doesn't make it instantly wrong. You know, being curious, having an open mind, being joyful at a new discovery, instead of being combative that it's not something you already believe, that is a necessary part of becoming a carefree cook or a well-adjusted adult, I might suggest. And if you're not willing to learn something new, well, please don't waste your time arguing with other people who might have something valuable to share. There's too much arguing going on, but if you can take in some new information, if you can find a place for it to help move your journey forward, this be the place, <laughs> all right? If you wanna to commit to learning something new and moving your journey forward, this is the place. I'm still doing it myself. I learn every day. And like I've often said, I learn from you. 
Very often I learn from you and I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing your cooking ideas and inspirations in our Carefree Cooks community because I'm going to admit to you right now, I steal them. <laughs> I've stolen quite a few of them over the years. I take your ideas and I use them in my own kitchen. Isn't that why we're all here? Right? To share? To steal from each other? Ideas? Right? That's the whole idea. Because when you get into the kitchen, when you stuff all your knowledge into that kitchen apron po pocket, you start to realize that your cooking is better than the restaurant that you used to go to. Used to to go to. That's the realization I'm having. Are you having that same realization lately? That cooking your own food at home is better, it's cheaper, it's easier, it's safer, it's healthier, and then you have the pride of doing it yourself? That's such a better package than dropping a few hundred bucks on a dinner. But, but, big but, you need some skills to, to do that. And as a matter of fact, when you cook as well or as better than the restaurant that you used to go to, you're not just one carefree cook, you're many carefree cooks at once. So let me explain this idea. It sounds like a head scratcher. Uh, it, it may not appear it because I'm generally a happy guy, but I'm kind of sad today uh, because one of my favorite Baltimore restaurants announced that they will not be reopening. And when Heather and I were able to go out to restaurants, something we don't do anymore, uh, which means I've cooked every single meal in my own kitchen at home for about seven months now. But when we did, we used to go to nice restaurants. And this one in particular, this is a shot of, of the Alexander Brown restaurant here in beautiful downtown Baltimore, Maryland. This was one of our favorites for sure. And the place was barely open a year and announced that it wouldn't reopen through the pandemic. And it was hot cuisine. It was top of the top in restaurants. And Alexander Brown wasn't just a name they picked. It's a big name in Baltimore. And not just in Baltimore, but in forming our entire nation. Because Alexander Brown and Sons, the same, there's a picture of the same building from the early 1800s. Alexander Brown and Sons was the first investment bank in the United States, 1808 and it raised funds for Baltimore's water system, and it was the prime investor in the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad in 1827, the B&O Railroad. And I could go on for an hour about this Irish immigrant, this prominent Baltimorean whose family changed our country for generations, along with his sons that came, William, George, John, James, but I'm not gonna go into that because this is supposed to be about food and cooking. Anyway, the original bank was built in 1901, and having survived the Great Baltimore Fire of 1904, that same building is standing today. The restaurant in the same building as the one with the horses and carriages. It's one of the things I love about this city. So they did millions of dollars in renovations. They made it a really hot cuisine, a really, it was, <laughs> it was just really an exquisite restaurant. It had portraits of the original land granted first Lord of Baltimore, a whole bunch of really impressive artwork, old maps of the Inner Harbor, uh, a lot of paintings of, of horses, hounds, and clipper ships. And <laughs> if there are paintings of horses, hounds, and clipper ships, uh, you're in Baltimore, hon. I got news for you. You feel like you're eating in 1901. I mean, it was just, I couldn't say enough about this place. And I know you're going to ask me what I used to order when I went there. So I'll tell you. And considering I think it's bad form to take food pics and flash photography at fancy restaurants, I've never taken a photo of any of their food. So I did pull some photos off their website and I remember their crab beignet appetizer. Crab meat meets a beignet. It's like a crab cloud. It was just light and clean and, and freshly crabby. Uh, they serve with an avocado creme fraiche. I'd like to try and make that. And a whole bunch of Old Bay, of course. You can, you can smell the Old Bay as the waiter approaches your table. So much Old Bay. But 
It's awesome if you're in Baltimore. I remember having their duck breast with savory black rice, pickled daikon, and grilled baby bok choy. Outrageous. Heather had king salmon with this really nice crispy skin. They served it with beluga lentils, summer squash, romesco sauce, and a tempura squash blossom. A tempura squash blossom. <laughs> That's what put it over the top. It... These meals that we had at the Alexander Brown, it, it, they're like eating one of the works of art off the wall. It's crazy. But I'm so sad because I don't know when I'll ever be at a restaurant like that again. And that's why I've been concentrating on improving my cooking skills during this pandemic. And I, I still want that high level of food, you know? I, I just have to try and make it myself now. And yeah, I, I think my cooking is better than most restaurants. Maybe not better than the Alexander Brown, but I start to wonder how many cooks would I have to be to pull this meal off? Cooking fish, cooking duck breast, making a clean and crispy tempura, steaming vegetables, making black rice. I mean, could, could one person have all these skills? Is that possible? No, it, 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 not in this restaurant, not in Alexander Brown. There's more than one chef making all that. What do, you, what do you think? There's one guy scurrying all over cooking fish and cooking salmon and cooking lamb. No, there's a whole team, a whole team behind the scenes, and it's called a kitchen brigade. This is something that we teach in culinary school. The, the culinary students need to know the different positions in a classical kitchen brigade. And I remember sitting in that restaurant not long ago, <laughs> sitting there in food heaven, thinking about all the chefs, thinking about all the skills that go into making a meal like that. And, you know, even if your food isn't hot cuisine fancy, <laughs> even if it's not top of the top, it got me thinking about how many chefs that you would have to be to get your dinner done every night of the week. And I started checking off the skills in my head. You know, could, could I do that? Could I, could I cook a duck breast? Could, could I do that? Could I make a, a squash blossom tempura? Do, do I have the confidence to, to make a black rice? I, I mean, how many roles in the classic kitchen brigade system could I fill in my own house? I want you to think about that because you're going to make yourself very proud of yourself in barely 15 minutes time because today I'm going to ask you the same question. How many roles could you fill in this kitchen brigade? How many cooks do you have to be to make the meals that you really love? And this goes back to a little bit of culinary history. I'm going to give you a little bit of culinary history. Augusta Scoffier. He is considered the father of modern cuisine. He created the brigade system. Maybe one day I'll do a culinary history episode if you'd like. Would you like a culinary history episode? Thumbs up if you would. I'll count the thumbs later. <laughs> okay, cool. <clears throat> I would love to share culinary history with you because think about it. Restaurants just didn't pop up, right? There's a history to it. Anyway, before restaurants, large kitchens were of a household of royalty or nobility, rich, important people, mayors, things like that. And these large household kitchens, they were chaos. Kitchen duties were organized by the type of food, not the skill or the task. And that's what made chaos. Escoffier, he changed all this, not cooking fish or poultry in six different ways, but the guy that cooks the grill gets fish and poultry. You get this? Escoffier changed all of it. It was about 1885. He was working at the Savoy Hotel in London. Escoffier said it was chaos. It had to stop. And he created the system that we still use today. The best place that you can see this beside hot cuisine restaurants that we don't go to anymore, I, I hesitate to say, is on a cruise ship, which we don't do anymore either. But in the day when you've taken a cruise, uh, you've seen the classical brigade system at work. You, you've seen the hierarchy in the dining room, but there's a brigade in the kitchen as well. Maybe I'll touch on the dining room brigade another time. Uh, they're piling up, all the things I want to talk to you about. So here's Escoffier's classical brigade system, and I want you to keep score in your head. How many of these jobs could you do? And in advance, 
Please forgive my French pronunciations. I don't speak French. I only speak kitchen French and barely that much, all right? So let's start at the top of the kitchen. Top of the kitchen in the classical brigade system is the chef de cuisine or the chief of the kitchen. And most often, that's called the executive chef today. I've held a few of those positions. It's, it's not really a cooking position. It's a management position really is. It, it, it creates the menu. Executive chef purchases the raw food, hires the staff, trains apprentices, manages the kitchen, manages the cost, things like that. So that's you, right? You're, you, you are the chef de cuisine in your own kitchen if you plan the menus and you do the shopping, good for you. You're executive chef in your own kitchen. I'm proud of you. That was a, that was a quick promotion. But right below him or her is the sous chef de cuisine or the under chef of the kitchen. This person carries out the orders of the chef de cuisine. They accept the incoming food. They take inventory. They often track food usage. They often run the kitchen, right? Exec chef is kind of a figurehead. They're the ones that run the cuisine, uh, the cu kitchen when the chef de cuisine it, it usually isn't there during service times. Again, a management position. So let me ask you this. Uh, when you go grocery shopping, uh, does your spouse like ever put the groceries away or, or your kid or, all right, maybe you put the groceries away. They take inventory. They figure out what you need to buy next time. This makes them or you the chef de cuisine, the sous chef de cuisine. Okay. Two jobs. Good, good. Saucier is the sauce maker. And in a small kitchen, they'll also make soups. This is the third in charge person, the saucier, important position, and one of the most respected positions in the kitchen because of, well, the obvious skill it takes to make all kinds of sauces and all kinds of soups. So you make soups or sauces, boom, there you go. You're the saucier too in your own kitchen. You make the sauces, right? So that now that's three jobs that you're doing in your kitchen, or maybe two, and your kid does the third. Then there's the cuisinier. Cuisinier, they assemble all the dishes under the heat lamp and they with the prepared ingredients. So this is a, a, a saute line cook. This is a, a grill line cook, a line cook, really. You're the cuisinier in your kitchen if you're assembling from prepared ingredients and having all those ingredients meet the heat. You're the cooker. Cuisinier is the cooker, basically. Wow. Now you're doing four jobs. Good for you. That's impressive. Uh, do you have a kami, a komi? The junior cook. The junior cook assists the cuisinier. If you've got children that help you out, if you've got a husband or anybody else, uh, go ahead, call them the kamis. They, that's what they are. So you're doing four out of five jobs now, three out of five. But then in the classical brigade system, there are stations set up by the cooking method. Again, not by the top of uh, type of food. And this is where Escoffier agrees with me. <laughs> cooking should be broken down by the method, not the food item. I'm so glad he agreed with me 200 years before he died. Uh, yeah, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> maybe, maybe I got it from him. A little bit of chance of that, maybe. Because the cooking methods are way more important than what you are cooking. It's a carefree cook icon. So let's go through some of these uh, methods. The rotisseur is the roast cook. This is the one that cooks large pieces of meat or, or whole birds. Uh, this is a person that would use a rotisserie or large uh, convection ovens. Uh, below them is the griardine, is the grill cook. This is the person putting grill marks on things. Are you the griardine as well? The fruiturier is the fry friturier, is the fry cook. The fry cook works with really hot oil. Have you ever worked with hot oil? Poissonnier is the fish cook. They prepare all the seafood dishes. They do all the cleaning and portioning of whole fish. Have you ever cleaned shrimp? You're the poissonnier. The entremetteur, what am I up? There we go. Entremetteur is the entree preparer preparing soups. They prepare vegetables. Very often there's egg dishes assigned to the atremenier because uh, if there was, isn't like an undercook, they, they get kind of the leftover jobs. Do you do that too? You have all the leftover jobs <laughs> when they're all left over? In a modern brigade system, all these positions that, that cook in a certain method, it, it's usually funneled down to an expediter or, or an announcer and they assemble the plate, they garnish everything, they wipe the rim, 
Otherwise, if there's no expediter, it's the entremetier that oversees positions like the potager, who makes all the soups and reports to the entremetier. The legu legumier is the vegetable cook. They do all the steaming and poaching, par cooking of vegetables for later service. They get passed on to somebody else that's on the line. So now it's seeming to me like you're doing all these jobs in the kitchen. I don't know that I've missed one that you're not doing. It's, it's what is it about ten jobs now? Let's keep going. Then there's the gourmandier. Gourmandier is the pantry supervisor, literally the food keeper or keeper of food. They're responsible also for cold preparations, for hors d'oeuvres, for pâtés, terrines, aspics, sausages, things like that. Um, a lot of times the gourmandier keeps all cold items. They make leafy salads. They make the chicken salad and tuna salad, the protein salads, and the gourmandier is often responsible for the design of a buffet. So. With all those responsibilities, let me ask you, have you ever made some tuna or chicken salad for lunch? Yeah, there you go. You're the gourmandier too. Uh, are you using your knife skills? Good, saves your money, right? You break down a whole chicken into parts, getting free chicken, <laughs> that's always cool. Well, you're the boucher, you're the butcher too. And if you bake, you're probably gonna be doing another five jobs in the kitchen, like the pâtissier, the pastry cook, who prepares all the sweets and other baked goods. Uh, sometimes the pâtissier makes fresh pasta. Have you ever made fresh pasta? Well, pasta making is so similar to mixing and baking, they give the pasta the, to the pâtissier sometime. Uh, confiture makes candies and pedophores. One of the cool things that I remember about uh, the Alex Brown restaurant and, and most fancy restaurants that you would go to, a lot of times there's a mousse-bouche it's, it's a little treat from the kitchen to amuse the mouth is, is what it means. And sometimes between courses or at the beginning of your meal or before desserts, we got it with the check. And there were these really artful little chocolates. Uh, they were filled with a hazelnut cream. There was a little jellied raspberry square on top. It's just a one bite thing that you pop in your mouth. Well, that's why you have a confiture. The, the candy maker makes that stuff. There you have it. It's all of them, right? Almost all of them. It's the butcher, the baker, and the candy maker. <laughs> Isn't that how it goes? No. But butcher, baker, candlestick maker. I remember that. When I, when I was in culinary school, I've told you, one of my mentors, Chef Jan Bandula, master pastry chef, like world-renowned, insane. We were such good friends. I was able to return to my alma mater and teach side-by-side side with Chef Bandula. It's incredible. But Chef Bandula, when I, was a, <laughs> when I was a student, if you would bring him something that you baked, uh, you know, that wasn't very good, he didn't mince words. He would look down. He had this heavy Polish accent. He would look down. He would say, you are no baker. You are, <laughs> you are no butcher. You are no baker. You must be candlestick maker. <laughs> that was the insult from Chef Bandula. You must be candlestick maker. In other words, find another job. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, the glacier. Have you ever made ice cream? You ever made pudding for that matter? Cold desserts, the glacier, all frozen and cold desserts. Uh, like one of my favorite restaurants in the world, the Gilda restaurant in Barcelona and my friend Michel, who has an ice cream chef on staff. Chef only makes ice cream. Do you know why? Because this is the insane guy. He's a Belgian. He, he pairs fried shrimp and ice cream. I've eaten there, it's crazy. Uh, if you have my Spanish Food Finds DVD, uh, you've seen my interview with him and the incredible dishes he makes where he pairs everything with ice cream. I've never seen anything like it. It's insane. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, the decorator. I'm not going to try French on that. <laughs> it's basically the decorator. They create show pieces, specialty cakes. Uh, they also make filigree. 
the little chocolate pieces that garnish cakes and desserts. Uh, have you ever made a cake for someone for a baby shower or something like that? You're the decorateur. Uh, the boulanger is the baker. Uh, they often split responsibilities with the pâtissier. Pâtissier makes the sweet goods. The boulanger makes the breads and rolls. You ever bake bread? You're the boulanger too. This is getting a little monotonous, right? Don't forget about two other very important positions in the kitchen. They have French names also. <laughs> The plongeur, plunging things into the water. The plongeur is the dishwasher. Yeah, you're the dishwasher too, you know it. And in a larger kitchen, there's also the marmiton. Marmiton is the heavy pot washer. If you cook with any heavy pots, that's your job too. Oh my goodness. Were you keeping score? How many? That's 21. 21 classical brigade jobs that you're doing in your own kitchen. Congratulations. Good for you. Aren't you proud? You're doing the work of 21 people just to get food done every night. But it doesn't feel like a chore. You still love it, don't you? Because there's room to learn about each and every one of these 21 positions. Get my finger in there. Each and every one of these 21 positions, there's still more to learn about. But for the moment, you can be even more proud, even more proud of your cooking and all the things that you create because with each one, when you concentrate on a method, you're developing a specialized skill set. You don't just cook things, you create you invent, you improvise, you do what 21 other people would be doing if they were there with you, but they're not. It's just you. And I cringe every time someone tells me that, well, I just can't cook. I just can't. Like there are people that think that you have to be born knowing how to cook. It's not a gene. It's a combination of skills like all these. The more of those skills you can put together, the better you're gonna be in your own kitchen. And like we talked about earlier, if you're open to learning, you can learn a little bit of them all. You won't master every one of them, but a little bit of them all. And that's why having a sense of forward motion, having a sense of progressing in your journey toward becoming a carefree cook is so important. Because with each new skill you add to your repertoire, uh, the greater variety of meals you can make and the less chefs from the 1800s you need to call upon because you will quickly become all of them at once. And then when you're all the positions in your own home restaurant, well, you're never gonna have labor disputes. <laughs> you're never gonna go on strike. You're not gonna ask for a raise. If there's a vote, it's gonna be unanimous. So be all the positions in your own kitchen. It's a heck of a lot of fun. And be aware that there are specialty skills, but you can adopt all of them. Oh, and by the way, I should bring that slide back. You notice uh, there's no instapot sure. <laughs> there's no instacook monnier, right? There's no sous vide sous chef. I'm not gonna get started about that today. Cooking is not about gadgets. God, a Scoffier would hate that. Uh, let's go back to, uh, let's see how many classical brigade positions are being filled by our carefree cooks community. Uh, our members that are lifetime members of web cooking classes. Becky, nicely done. Becky shared her very first post inside our community. I'm proud of her for that because it takes some, uh, some courage <laughs> to do that. Uh, we have almost 16,000 people in there now. So it's a little brave to show your first post, but she killed it. This is great. Knocked it, killed is a good thing. Knocked it out of the park. park. This is her chicken cordon bleu. Uh, so what is she serving as? Rotisseur, Becky, you are rotisseur. You're the roast kitchen. Nicely done. Uh, Deborah, Deborah is potager from now on. Deborah Potager changed her last name because uh, she, she took a cold and rainy day and she turned it into pasta fajoule soup. Uh, Rosetta. Rosetta is also sharing her first post. Thank you, Rosetta. Uh, she has a smoked lobster tail with shrimp and scallops. <laughs> awesome. That sounds like a job for the poissonnier in the kitchen. Fish cook. Rosetta. You're the poissonnier. Uh, Rena is the griardin, the grill cook, because she's making her hubby happy because the, the best grilled filet mignon in town 
is now in hubby's home and the wife is cooking it. Makes everybody happy, right? Uh, Diane is going to finish our virtual meal as the pâtissure. She is the pastry chef with this awesome looking triple chocolate banana bread. Let me say it again. Triple chocolate banana bread with ice cream. Love my chocolate, she says. Whew, yeah, me too, Diane. Uh, look, I want you to stay at home. I want you to be safe. Uh, I want you to cook your own food in your own kitchen more than anything else. And I want you to see how many chefs you can become. I'm having a blast lately. I mean, you would think I know everything about cooking. Uh, you w would be the only one because I don't think I know everyone, <laughs> everything about cooking. If you think, you, if you think I do, uh, I don't think I do. Anyway, I'm having a whole bunch of fun learning new things lately, checking off the number of restaurants that I replace on a weekly basis. You know, I'm now making pizzas that are much better than my pizza place. I, ca I can't believe in, in six months I've worked on it and worked on it and tried the doughs and different sauces and different cheeses. My pizzas are way better than a pizza place now. Uh, I'm making healthier Indian food than my Indian restaurant. Here's my tikka moor sala. I'm baking my own naan. I figured out how to do that. My fried rice is cleaner. It's lighter. It is so much less salty than the takeout I used to get. And two days ago, I did something that I have not done in 15 years. I made sushi. So I have now replaced my sushi restaurant as well. And don't forget, <laughs> you, you can see all these restaurants I'm replacing. Go to my Instagram page and you can see night by night and maybe that will inspire you to replace some of these takeout foods that I just can't believe how much better my cooking is. And again, if you're dedicated to learning, if you're dedicated to progressing, then, then this exploration, th this time of exploration is one of the most exciting things you can do with the time that we have now. Uh, speaking of which, running out of time. Uh, Carnival squash, is it a hybrid? Yeah, that's true. Car Carnival squash is a hybrid. Uh, it does not like exist in nature, but you put sweet dumpling and acorn together, you get the carnival squash. And of course, it's fall. It's the squash time of year. Uh, uh, start cooking those squashes. Don't be afraid of them. We'll, we'll talk about that again, I'm sure. Look, if you enjoyed learning about the classical brigade system today, if you have a greater sense of pride because you're doing up to 21 jobs in your own kitchen, if you realized at the same time, though, that there still is a lot more to learn, well, please like and share this video with as many people as you can so we can all become free in the kitchen. And, you know, I keep saying carefree cook, carefree cook. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should definitely get my free guidebook. It's the five forks to carefree cooking because along your path to becoming truly free in the kitchen, you're going to have to make some decisions. You're going to come to some forks <laughs> and you're going to have to figure out which way to go. I can guide you through freedom or frustration. So go to fiveforksguide.com to download your free copy today. So until next Tuesday, uh, when we'll try and figure out another key to cracking the Carefree Cooks code, this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your cooking success. Bye everyone.